think is I think it's just very important to to even to even get the, the the message across about the necessity in the present time to use what 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 little uh, resources that we may think we have. Now we may think that we have limited resources over here in the West, but if you study the economics, if you study the currency within Africa in general and Ethiopia more specifically, you'll find out about the dollar differences. Now we're focusing more on Ethiopia because if the first shall be last and last shall be first. And right now it seems as though the West is, is the first and Africa slash Ethiopia is the last. But this kind of inspiration came across to I and I and we was talking about it um offline and, and didn't record anything on it. So we wanted to put something together on it basically to encourage ones you know, to do their own due diligence, but to invest in Ethiopia and the Ethiopian economy and more over the Ethiopian society and Ethiopian people, you know, especially the righteous, the faith-based people and those who, who embrace the, the, the truths that we also as Arastafari embrace before it's too late. Because it's very clear that the economy of the West is ending up in a, in a basket. Of course, they tell you that it's affecting everybody. And to a degree, it is affecting everyone. But remember what Christ said, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So the West, the Western, the, 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 the so-called um, remnant of white supremacy is the first, but it's rapidly becoming the last. In fact, there's a lot of other people who are trying to invest in Africa, Yet we need to invest in Africa in particular. We need to invest in Ethiopia before it is too late. Because when you look at the, the dollars, like the bur, the bur is, is the currency of um, Ethiopia. It's um, officially between six and, no, I think seven and eight. It fluctuates, you know. Of course it fluctuates because they are also kind of under this kind of thing, this global system to a degree as well. But we're talking about on the ground. It reminds me of um Christ Jesus Christos' parable where it says, um, make ye friends of unrighteous mammon so that when you fail they will take you into eternal or ever living um abodes or domains. Let's let's go to this really right here just for a moment. Because we thought about it and we said, wait, we think we only have a little bit here and we do only have a little bit here. Like a like say a dollar, for example, is about ten or more, has the strength over there on the ground, you understand, to help, to build and to do things for the people and for the, the society. And see this is how we show our goodwill. We wonder why Africans in general, but more particularly Ethiopians, may not receive us as Ethi may not receive our word. Some say, well, Ethiopian, don't accept us as Ethiopian. Because we have not really invested in the, the culture or the community. I mean, I'm talking about real work on the ground. Now, of course, there's some dubious folks, you understand, Ethiopian, quote-unquote, African, quote-unquote. You know about the Nigerian scam, so forth and so on. But can you really blame them coming from their perspective? You know, we as African blacks, pro-Africa, pro-black, but we keep putting our money like in Walmart, and in Babylonian kind of things, and, and, and really giving only when there's some crisis over there, maybe our heartstrings are pulled a little bit that we may put a 5 10 20 or something dollars, and we think we did a big thing. We better invest before it's too late because as the economy, as, as God's words fulfill, as those who are last become first, you know what I'm saying? and those who think themselves to be first become last. This is part of judgment. You know, our money could have done us some, some good, but it won't even help us to buy a cup of buna, you know, a cup of coffee, you know, which might be a couple of cents now. So what we're saying is we need to invest in our own before it is, it is too late. So there's the parable of the unjust steward. You might know of the parable of the unjust steward, and it's here in St. Luke's, St. Luke's Gospel, Chapter 16. And we just give you a, a little portion of it just to emphasize our 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 word here of investing in Ethiopia. And if you need investment advisors, because we would not encourage anybody to invest in whether any businesses, persons, or people whom we are not convinced by some evidence 
share you know saying our best interest and we their best interest so if one needs an a, a advice or what is what they call it advisors like investment Ethiopian investment advisors then line and Jewish society of his imperial majesty I and I and others who are in the faith of the King of Kings and his Christ are the ones to turn to who will give you actual evidence you know, to back up our advice so forth and so on as well as stir you away as through advice say don't, don't deal with it right there and give you reasons why but we better do it before it's too late the economy is rapidly in a recession and this recession probably won't really turn around it, 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 how can it since we know that the Western economies are based on slavery and misdeeds and now the 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 chicks have come home so so to speak to roost you know, and they wonder, well, what happened to the Western economies? How come the economy is coming down? It's because people don't work. No, the economy is messed up because it's built on bloodshed and slavery. That's why, and people now know more about freedom, you know, and are calling for equal rights, so forth and so on. They, they expect them to be treated equally, and they know that they cannot keep the old system of slavery and racism and white supremacy and have equality for everybody. But they're not telling you that some of your college folks, educated folks, yes, you already know that. You know, and, and as religious folks, you know, God don't like ugly and says a civilization that's built on bloodshed must be judged. And this is what's going on right now. It's a little slow mo. You know, it's, it's going slow. It's not happening all at once. And this too is a mercy. So let's invest in Ethiopia. Ethiopian righteous Ethiopian righteous Africans businesses people other 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 works before it is too late and this parable right here the parable of the unjust do it let's just go through this um, pretty quickly and, and you probably get the point the point in the message of this it reads from verse 1 it says and he said speaking of Yehoshua Jesus Christos gave touch our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he said also to his disciples, his decum as a morit, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. That means like had a manager, had somebody that worked for him. You know, nowadays, you know, um, black people have moved up into man. Have you noticed something? They let the black man now be president when the economy's busted so they can turn around and blame it on the black man. This is what they're doing for Obama, you know. Um, this is what they're doing for a lot of the businesses, too. They'll put black faces there. Well, they already know, they already do their forecast, and they already see that it's going down, and then they'll put a black person there so they can blame, yes, we had the black man there, but he, he ruined our economy. The economy is already ruined. You know what I'm saying? When that first drop of black blood and slavery was shed, you know what I'm saying? The economy, the future, even the eternal life was even ruined from, from that very first misdeed. But here, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused to him that he had wasted his goods. So there was a rich man, he had a manager or a steward, and that particular steward or manager was accused to him that he was wasting his goods. And he called him and said to him, how is it that I hear this of thee? How am I, I'm getting these rumors. Give an account of thy stewardship. Give an account of how you're managing my affairs. For thou mayest be no longer steward. I'm going to take you out of the job. Give me an account. Then the steward said within himself, then this manager who was wasted his master's goods, he said to himself, he said, what shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. He's taken away from me my, my, my job. I cannot dig. To beg, I'm ashamed. I can't do hard work, and, I, and I'll be damned if I'm going to ask for stuff after I've already been in this good job, this good position. I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, in other words, when he's put out of his managerial, middle management, they call it today, middle management job, they may receive me into their houses. In other words, if I, if I, if I work out what I can work out now while I have an opportunity. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors to him. So he called in all the people who owed owe, owe his master some sort of debt or something, right? You know, the whole credit thing, you know, who were in the rears with their credit, so they had some debt, right? And a lot of us know what this debt is like now, today. Anyway, and he said to the first one, he says, how much owest thou to my Lord? How much do you owe my, my master? 
And he said, a hundred measures of oil. And he, and he said to him, take thy bill. In other words, hey, hey, you have a bill. Sit down quickly and write 50. In other words, here's your bill. How much do you owe? You owe, you owe 100 measures of oil. So what this um, unjust steward thought, he said, um, here's a bill. Write down on it 50, and we'll be settled on that. Then said he to another, how much owest thou? In other words, how much do you owe my boss, the boss? And he said, 100 measures of wheat. And he said to him, take thy bill and write four score. A score is 20. So four score will be four times 20. So he said 80. So he's taking a loss of the first. He took a loss of half. And here he's taking a loss of the, of the wheat of, um, of 20, right? And the Lord, now the master, the boss, right, he commended the unjust steward. In other words, this, this unjust manager, he commended him because he had done wisely. He, he used his noodle. He used his senses, he wasn't a very good manager, but when he found out that he was going to be out of a job pretty soon, see, a lot of, a lot of the lost sheep don't recognize what's going on with its economy. When he recognized that, he did wise because he had done wisely. Now, hear this. This is the teaching of Jesus Christos, of Jesus Christ, of Yeshua HaMoshiach, of our black Lord and Savior. He says that for the children of the world are what? are in their generation, this is their generation, their time, they are wiser than the children of light. So if we say we are enlightened with the true light of Rastafari, the true light of Christ, the light of truth, how come we're not wiser than these worldly folks? The worldly folks now know how to handle their debt. They know what time it is. You understand? Many of them have already started to invest in Africa. And so you're going to hear Africa in the news a whole lot. But they're, here's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're going over to Africa and saying, oh, the Africans need our help, and we are investing in this school and this water pump project and, and building this well and, and doing a hospital here and, and building some houses over here and, and, and helping get, get jobs for the women and skills for the women and, and these things for the men. That's how they're helping. What are we doing? Think about it. Think about the scenario that we're presenting here and think about the fact that Christ himself mentioned this and he often mentioned this to say this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. These are the circumstances and situations that be confronting the kingdom of heaven. And I say to you, the words of Christ, read letter Bible, you see right here, he says what? He says, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. He's, he says, use the money. Let's just use this right here. Use these dollar bills. This is the mammon of unrighteousness. And, and we go through all the symbology and everything, the devil, Satanist, Illuminati, order, Roman Empire, all of this Caesar stuff, right? But, but he says, make what? To yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, the mammon, the money of unrighteousness. Make friends with it. That when ye fail, that when this shitstorm of things fails, and, and know this, it will fail. You understand? We're not prophesizing what day and what hour, but it's bound to fail because Babylon is fallen, is fallen. A lot of people are going to be wailing, weeping, and, and moaning because they did not make to themselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting or eternal habitations. That's what's very interesting about that. What does that mean in the real practicus, in the real practical level? We are saying it means to invest in righteous Ethiopians and for us to invest in Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? And take advantage of the fact that right now the American dollar is a little bit higher than the Ethiopian dollar, and to help Ethiopians, righteous, preferably Ethiopians, but even some who are not right, it didn't say to invest in the unrighteous. It said to use the mammon, these dollars, you know, these Babylonian dollars of unrighteousness to use it wisely, to use it wisely instead of foolishly. He that is faithful in that which is least, is faithful also in much. Do you know that one of these U.S. dollars goes about seven times, maybe eight times on the black or whatever other kind of market, maybe even more than ten times in Ethiopia, in Africa? You know how appreciative people would be if you invest even one, even with this, even this one dollar or some. This one dollar, they get about ten bur or so. 
And then when you're saying Babylon is falling, I need some place for myself and family to live. Somebody will remember you. Somebody will receive you into everlasting, eternal habitations when Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Just something to think about. So he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least. So if you're unjust in this, if you got a, a monophic in your heart, and you're like, I ain't going to do nothing, kind of such and such and such. Well, you're unjust in the least, and you'll be unjust in much, and um, you'll just have to deal with it, you know? But if there, therefore, if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, look what, look what God is saying. He's saying to us in the scripture, and Yeshua was saying to us, if we have not been faithful, in this unrighteous mammon, this is the modern day unrighteous mammon. We've talked about it. Others have talked about it. The evidence is there. Nobody's saying this is righteous. Even the devil and the liars and people whose God this is, they, they know this is an unrighteous God. You know what I mean? This is an unrighteous mammon. But Christ is saying that if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust, that key word, trust, your confidence, the true riches, the real riches. And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, this is not our money, this is another man's money. Like Christ said, whose inscription is on there? Whose face is on there? That's not my face. That's not nobody in my family. Nobody in my race looks like this. You know what I mean? The people who, who, who bought and sold us and abused us for 400 plus years, they look like this. So if you have not been faithful, in that which is another man's, hint, hint, that which is another man's right here, who shall give you that which is your own? That's deep, right? There. That's a whole meditation, you know. I said to each one, this is our proclamation, our preaching of this, but you read over it and don't ask your preacher or pastor. Ask the Spirit of God in Christ to give you wisdom. You understand? Ask the Spirit of God in Christ to show you in your heart and your mind what this really means for yourself. No servant can serve two masters. See, unfortunately, what you all call this the almighty dollar. But this is the almighty word of God right here. But you will prefer to serve this almighty dollar instead of serving the almighty. That's why Christ says no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. People say, well, I can love money and love God. Only in lying to yourself. For either he will hate the one, that's why some people have psychological cuckoo problems, you know what I mean? For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one. I'm holding to my dollar and despising the other. That's just Bible. We're talking about the Bible. I'm dealing with real paper. You see what I'm saying? Ye cannot serve God and mammon. So I and I have chosen to serve our God, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yehoshua HaMoshiach with our dollars, you understand, and investing in those eternal habitations. After all, Ethiopia was there in the Bible from, from Genesis. Ethiopia is throughout the Bible. I don't even find America anywhere in the Bible, not by name, but I can judge America by the fruits. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. So, brothers and sisters, this is just a word to the wise. So, if you need... Um, counseling on investment or investment portfolio so we can use this unrighteous mammon wisely like the unjust steward in Christ's parable showed us, then get in touch. Check us out at www.lojsociety.org. Shalom. Ras Teferi.